Hi there, it's Jaya. Just coming in to give you a short little uh, review from our class the other day. I've used a drawing from my computer. It's the floor plan that we're working on. And I went in and added dimensions the way you will be adding dimensions when you get started. So I've started and I've done some of the layout and then I thought I would include you in the rest of the layout. However, I can't draw in all my my phone, which is my camera, at the same time. So I'm going to kind of twist it up. Let's see, I can get this end in. I'm gonna twist it and I'm gonna work over here. Now I think I could even move the phone so that is even more towards the center. Okay, just to show you how this was uh, laid out, um, what we wanna do is move our first dimensions away from the drawing so that they are um, viewed as separate from the actual drawing itself. So we don't touch the drawing with our extension lines. Am I outside the drawing? Yep, I am. Okay, so you can see here we don't touch the drawing with our extension lines. This is an extension line. It extends from the drawing and it becomes the boundary for your dimension line. And these tick marks that you make freehand, by the way, not with your triangle, um, those indicate where the two lines cross. Because whenever we're dimensioning something, we are dimensioning to a point, a single point. And that point is defined by two lines that cross each other. And basically we're just noting where that point is and we're giving you a number to correspond with that point in space. So what I did was I started by taking my scale using my one, just my regular one inch ruler end of my scale and I measured away from the outside edge of the drawing one eighth of an inch. So one eighth of an inch, I made a tick mark. Where are my tick marks? So there they are, you can see them, which it's not really recommended, but I can see mine. So one eighth of an inch down there. Then I went to one half of an inch. You want to kind of bring the first group of dimensions away from the drawing. So we go with a half an inch there and then we measure out three eighths of an inch after that and on and on. Now I did four, but it ends up that I'm really only needing three lines of dimension. So I can erase one of these so that I'm not confused by it. I, I could just not use it, but I don't want to confuse anyone. So there, that's what I need. And I, like I, I usually like to start on the outside edges, putting in that first overall dimension. It just helps me get centered visually because a lot of times like I know where that line's going because I've already marked the distance. So I can put in a good line. That means I can press hard on it, put in a good solid line there. And right here, we're doing the outside of the building again. And I've already created my boundaries. Oops, there. So now I have my outside dimension line for my overall dimension on this side of the drawing. Now we say never to repeat dimensions, but when you have broken dimensions underneath a dimension line, you always put your overall dimension. So I will always put two dimensions on each side unless the two sides are exactly the same. So I'm just gonna come in a little bit. What I'm doing is actually coming in about that eighth of an inch, but I'm eyeballing it and I can put in my dimension line there. See how they cross at the corners? That's what you need them to do. So now I can use this lower line as a guideline for my text. And I can just put an eighth of a little dot there. I do not have my lettering guide, so I'm having to measure all of this out by hand. But that that's where this would go, and this is also uh, the same as on the other side, and the overall dimension is 24 feet 0 inches. So I'm going to pull back the camera and come down a little bit, and you can see. 
So we have to dimension both sides of the drawing. And now I'm going to further dimension this side by going to mark off the center of this window. Oops. Over here. I'm going to measure it and quarter inch scale because this is quarter inch scale equals a foot. Now I can't move my scale up further again. I'm blocked. But I but when you're in quarter inch scale, it becomes easier to uh, uh I'm still blocked. So I am gonna turn this upside down. I lied. Yeah. I gotta get in there. Come on. Look, I'm moving my whole table now. Hey, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do to get these, this measured. So now let's get this window measured, Miss Rose. All right. Three feet. So half of that is going to be 18 inches, which is one foot six inches, or one and a half feet in quarter inch scale. And how do I know that? I just do. So I'm doing this. This is to the center line. So this is the first line of dimensioning because I'm going to the window opening and then I'm going to the next window opening and then I am going to the end of the wall. So in theory, I did not need three lines of dimensions. I really only needed Two, and since I want it to stay balanced, I'm going to come back in here. You might see the top of my head right now, but I'm going to come back in and extend that line instead of erasing everything. I can do that easier than erasing. And then I know that my coming down below, that'll be the bottom of my guideline for my text. Coming down about an eighth of an inch. And that's those are my dimensions. Now, um, I will not be using this first one or the second one. So you can see that after all these years, I still have to sit and figure it out. And that's part of the reason why we will be calling your drawing when you're finished with it. It's actually a, a rough drawing. If we wanted it to be a finished drawing, and we will be doing finished drawings of this floor plan, we would be doing that on a sheet of paper called vellum. And we will get there. This is going to be our base drawing for our drafting project, then our lighting project, and then our elevation. So we're going to learn everything, everything there is to know about drafting and architectural design and building a very simple structure. And I'm pretty excited about it. So I hope you are too. Um, yes, I would come back over here then and I would add my eighth of an inch not with my eraser because that would be not the smartest move okay I'm going to pick up my correct pencil and I'm going to draw myself a few little guidelines here so you see if you turn your head to the left this is your dimension line and your dimension text sits above that line but doesn't touch that line you get my drift and then everything else goes to the center and as I mentioned before different window manufacturers different window sizes different window types will have and require different window openings so rather than tell people what this opening should be we tell them where the center of the window is so that when they're laying out um, the framing they can know where the center lands and it really doesn't matter whose window is delivered to them because once they find what the rough opening of the window is they can block it in uh, for that installation of that window and that's what happens on a job site and i hope that you get to see that soon i'm excited uh i love I love framing, I love building, I love finishes, so you will too. I just know you probably already do. Okay, so that's that, and I'll see you in class tomorrow, in the morning, 9.30. See you then. Bye.